Welcome to the Resistance Broadcast, everybody. I'm John. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are the official podcast of StarWarsNewsNet.com. This is our Thursday show, which means it's our discussion show. James and Lacey with me, as always. We're not doing a discussion because this week we have a great interview for you. I know a lot of you are already aware for this. Uh, we have uh, Eunice Huthart, who was the stunt coordinator for The Rise of Skywalker, joining us later. Um, uh, I mean, this was, guys, I, I mean, we've talked about this a lot. This might be, I don't want to overhype it because you, you don't like to do that, but one of, <laughs> I'll just say that, one of my favorite guest spots slash interviews that we've ever done. Uh, I can't wait for them to check this out in a bit. And they're probably like, well, just put it on now. No, <laughs> just put it on now. Uh, I mean, how excited are you guys f- just for that alone? It was awesome and i completely agree i don't like to overhype things but this for once is something that i will hype she is awesome the the best yeah yeah it was a lot of fun um she felt very loose open felt like we were talking with a friend good good interview i can't wait for to everybody to hear it hilarious um yeah really really fun but but like john was saying we got we got one with the force guys don't you guys want to do one with the force i, I guess so i do want to do one with the force <laughs> uh, but i do want to remind people you're going to see some questions come up later uh that we were able to ask uh eunice and she was nice enough to do that um and the way you're able to do that when we have certain guests on is uh becoming a resistance officer guys and i know mm-hmm. a lot of you are we appreciate that but um Three people got to ask ask her questions, um, and we had a bunch. Trust me, we this was very popular, right, Lacey? A lot of people sent in questions for most questions know. we've ever gotten for a guest. And I think on Patreon and also people wishing they got to ask questions online too. Like a lot of people were like, "Ask about this. Make sure to ask about this." Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. just another part of being a resistance officer. So if you if you if you want, check us out patreoncom slash broadcast. Obviously, a lot of other stuff on there that we'll get to later to explain to you about. But Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you get to ask questions to our guests. Um, And then also, just another slight reminder, uh, if you don't know already, our merch store has moved to teespring.com slash stores slash resistance broadcast. If you want your Make Solo 2 Happen shirt in time for Make Solo 2 Happen Day, you probably got to rush ship that thing at this point uh, because we are two weeks away. Less? What's today's date? 14th? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We also got to consider um, that I think a lot of these companies are also kind of behind, you know, they're trying to do what they can yeah, on right. limited staff and other things like that. So not only do you think like, well, you know, five to six days, whatever, I'm good, but also it's kind of pushed back. So, you know, consider that when you're um, right. you know, when you're thinking about picking up a shirt. Yeah, I think we're 11 days away from Make Solo 2 Happen Day, guys. So the 10 day countdown starts tomorrow. <laughs> so... Even if you don't have a Make Solo 2 Happen shirt, that's fine. That's all good. Just make sure you're make ready one. to hit your social yeah, make medias. Make one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Do your, do, get your planes that do the sky writing. If you do one of those, we'll definitely give you a huge shout out and put you on the channel. Uh, anything you got with Solo, just blast it out. So get, I'll start collecting it now and get ready because in 11 days, Make Solo 2 Happen Day is going to be here. We are so excited about it. We're not telling you any more about our plans just yet. But um, I think I have a cool idea for resistance transmissions, but I don't want to get into it just yet. Oh yeah. my god! Do you do you want <laughs> you guys want to hear a fun fact about skywriting? Sure. Don't I ever? There, there are only two people who are actually capable of skywriting alive: a man and a woman, and they're married to each other. And if you've ever seen skywriting before, you might think, oh, then I probably solved them. No, what you actually might be seeing is something called sky printing. And it's it's what most people use. And it's mm. like a pre-programmed thing that they have the saying written out or whatever. And they just tell the computer to release it at specific times. But the people who used to do it old school are all gone except for those two people. Kind of. Fun little Luke random Sky fact. Rider? What an interesting... <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs> oh, All right. Geez. Um, thank you for that, James. It's the the more you know or whatever. That's like the new... And Han, <laughs> Han writing solo. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, James. How about a little one with the Force this week? What do we got going on? The Force is with me. And I'm one with the Force. This week... For one with the force, we're actually going to kick us off 
with a, a a little bit of a twist on the you're allowed to pick one uh, type of a thing. Here, I'm just going to jump into it. You'll see what I'm saying. Uh, the first little situation that we have to come up with is uh, describe the last Jedi to someone who has never seen it and doesn't care about spoilers using only one sentence. So this is not so much like you get to pick one. I guess you do. You get to pick your words <laughs> that define one sentence. But I'm going to start off with you, Lacey. What is your one sentence to define The Last Jedi? Ray FaceTimes with Kylo and Luke dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So it's just a full spoiler. Uh, yeah. Right on. That was so bad. <laughs> Did you just think of your sentence right now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. That's Lacey, everybody. I'm hands down best sentence I've ever come up with. It's a great sentence. We should... I don't want to build up my sentence now, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, John, what do you got? Well, she took mine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, no, I would say you're a writer. Your sentence is probably way better than mine. No, 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 no. I'm a sky writer. I'm the third. Person no, in the world why'd you say it. it like that? I don't know. Uh, I'm the only third. I'm only the third person in the world who can sky write. I don't know if you knew that. Um, oh, word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not your typical Star Wars movie, but gives you the redemption of Luke Skywalker. Interesting that both of you, I don't know, di- well, I, I like that. Yeah, I think it describes it. Um, what I was going to say was I think both of you actually are describing it to a person, and I'm thinking I, I wrote like a synopsis kind of a thing. In one sentence? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. What do you got? But but it's weird because, but we, can we talk about yours for a second, though? For a second, I guess. <laughs> Um. Yeah. I guess it just it really feels like you're you're like meh. You know, like you're describing it to a friend or something. I was kind of. What is your angle then? I don't. I'm... Mine. Mine was. Uh, Luke Skywalker loses his way, and Ray has to lead him back to the understanding of what it means to be a Jedi. That's good. I feel like you you could read that like on the back of a book or you know like um on IMDb or something like what is this movie about you know if you've seen the other Star Wars it kind of just lays it out like that. Yeah. Can I um, update mine? Sure. It's one okay. with the Force, not two with the Force, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's one and a half. <laughs> Rey and Kylo kill Snoke and Luke Skywalker drinks green boob milk and dies. Oh my god. <laughs> that's better thank you so much I, I actually think thought it is. about it <laughs> I think that's worse <laughs> and parenthesis um, there's a random casino scene parenthesis just put it right on the back right there <laughs> green boob milk yeah right there that would be the quote on the back like <laughs> I know they're gonna in the, com- in the comments they're gonna be like wow guys they're like this all right, James. It's a just, good movie. We're just joking around. No, I'm, I'm yeah, just yeah. kidding. I think mine was, I think most of them were positive. I don't think we were, uh, mine was good. Uh, the Redemption of Luke Skywalker. So. She said the movie was about boob milk. Oh, so <laughs> I'm not entirely positive. I'm just making fun. Just poking fun. Yeah. I think they should let us know what theirs are in the comments or on Twitter or something like that. Uh, that's probably dangerous, yeah, but that's sure. A, that's, a, that's a solid YouTube comment, yeah. right? Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, just a real I'll quick ad boy. from... Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're, let's move on to the next one. Um, if you could have one, would you rather see Anakin Skywalker or Qui-Gon Jinn appear in the Kenobi series? Obi-Wan Kenobi gets one friend. <laughs> yeah. This is a question for Obi-Wan. Who would he rather yeah. see? Um, John, what do you think? What's your answer? Qui-Gon. Without a doubt, we only we only got one movie with him. It's been a very long time, uh, and it would make the most sense with the connectivity to uh, Yoda and Obi Wan's conversation at the end of Revenge of the Sith. Um, how he learned how to come home with the Force. Him visiting him as a Force ghost would 
really make a lot of sense and build up that connection to the prequels in a very good and logical way. Whereas seeing a flashback of Anakin and Obi-Wan like, oh my God, I had a nightmare would not gel with me because I don't see Kenobi being mm-hmm. tormented in that sort of way. Um, so I got to go with Qui-Gon for mine. All right, Lacey, what do you think? Uh, Qui-Gon. I like mm, Liam Neeson. Okay. I like, I want more of live action relationship between the both of them. I know they've had a book and other stuff, but I'd like more of that live action relationship to on screen. By the way, Lacey, did you know Liam Neeson lives... In Connecticut, he does. Where Weston? I feel like a bunch of famous people live in Weston. I think like Sharon, Connecticut. Oh, so my mom has a town. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) I also went with Qui Gon. Oh, yay! Um, Ding ding ding! Welcome. Yeah, my. My uh, perspective on this was he seems like he fits better because of the story. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I guess I would, it wasn't so much Hayden Christensen, but you got to think it's Hayden Christensen. I would prefer to find out that he was coming back for something um, than Qui Gon because I feel like it's more rare that we're probably not going to see. Anakin come back or Hayden Christensen come mm-hmm. back. Um, but because the question is the Kenobi series, I don't think the the person Anakin Skywalker, the Hayden Christensen character works. I feel like it would have to be Darth Vader. Yeah. And so I'm just like, uh, eh, d- don't don't mess with that. I'd just rather see something that fits the story yeah. well. Yeah. And Qui-Gon like just fits right there. Mm-hmm. It's perfect for it. That makes sense. So I guess we're all on the same page. Um, all right. So the next one's kind of a little bit different, and I uh, wish Yoshi Vu was here. Um, if if you had a chance to name a, a popular scene from the prequels and you were able to uh, change it, you know, it would benefit from updating the special effects. Uh, what scene would you change? What do you think is the best scene to uh, that would uh, have a benefit from changing special effects or getting updated? Uh, Lacey, this is back at you first. So when I heard this question, I immediately thought of pod racing. But at the same time, I feel like they spent so much time on the pod racing with models and everything that it doesn't really need to be touched. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel like uh, the Gungan battle at the end of Phantom Menace could be totally improved with better CGI and tech. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, What do you say, John? This is really tough for me because I almost want to legitimately say completely redo the aesthetic of Jar Jar Binks. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Like yeah. just reanimate him completely. Not take Do away... Do it more justice. Not take away Ahmed's performance. The actual CG right. that they put over. The textures and stuff. Yes. Um, yeah. I think that would be a I didn't even think of that. But it's not a scene. So I would just say this. The end of Attack of the Clones, when you see the clone army and Palpatine's overlooking it, looks like a cartoon to me and (laughs) i think that's because they did a copy paste control v control v and just Mm. like line them like that whereas you can do kind of what they've been doing in the sequels where they use actual people and and they piece them together so you can see subtle movements Mm -hmm. it looks like actual people i would change that and it's very it's a not that important of a scene but to me that makes me i feel like i'm looking at some kind of bizarre uh, Ray- Ready Player One cartoon simulation when I see that scene still. And right. I think it's important because you're seeing the first look of the Empire in a way. Right. Yeah. I wish it looked like Ready Player One. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. True. I wasn't bad. I loved Ready, Ready Player, Player One. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, My answer was actually the same as Lacey's. Uh, so I was kind of bummed when she said oh, it. Wow. Uh, but I do think that that would probably be one of the best things because and it, it kind of stems off of your thing, John. Mm-hmm. The... Uh, the look of the Gungans, like they look like they're 3D models that they look like they're uh, animated characters. Yeah. Um, since we kind of talked about it a little bit, I had a kind of a backup and that's every scene inside the Jedi temple with like big sh- w- wiping shots. They look terrible. Uh, mm. Mostly I oh, think yeah. in Attack of the Clones. Dude, it's like 
it's funny because you watch these old documentaries of like how they made the the old movies and stuff, and they're like, well, we just shot this person and you know, on a blue screen or whatever, and then ILM was like able to like shrink it down and place it into a scene at the exact angle. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh wow, I didn't know that. I probably wouldn't have noticed. But you watch the, these mm-hmm. movies sometimes, and you're like, oh, I know exactly. They did that, the, and it looks bad, right? It's it. You can tell that like they're walking on a not real environment and it's like trying to move with them. <laughs> and it's like, it's just bad That's sometimes. Good, I'm like, oh my gosh, the shot. That's a really yeah. good pick. Yeah, I agree. So sometimes it's the environments. Um, all right, we got uh, one more question here in, in One with the Force this week. And it has to do with our newest Star Wars director. Taika Waititi mar- uh, marks the first MCU or Marvel Cinematic Universe director to direct a Star Wars f- uh, film, feature Star Wars film. Let's put it that way. Uh, what other Marvel director would you love to see direct a Star Wars movie? So, John, this one's coming to you first. You know, I thought about this. Um, I was going to. I don't want to take anyone's answer or step on toes here. I'm uh, Ryan Coogler. I think uh, it's going to be my pick. Um, I liked Creed. Uh, I thought Black Panther was really good, really well received, just crushed at the box office. And mm-hmm. I think fans would really uh, take to him uh, coming aboard and doing a Star Wars movie. So uh, I'm going to go with Ryan Coogler for my pick. Mm-hmm. All right, Lacey, what do you got? I picked the exact same answer. Ryan Coogler Did you? is so <laughs> good. Like that... <laughs> One of, if not the best shot in the MCU is the shot where uh, Michael B. Jordan's coming to the throne room and they switch it from a steady cam shot up to the top. Oh my God, that yeah. shot is beautiful. Yeah. And the soundtrack is perfect. Everything about it is just the best. Black Panther kills. Yeah. And even when they arrive into Wakanda, like, oh, it's so good. Every Everything time. Of- and it's so <laughs> genuine to what it stands for and what his vision was. And I yeah. think he would, you're right, John, he would kill it. So yeah, Ryan Coogler. There's a, there's another thing too, like with the year that that came out and they were doing the Oscars, I was like, there's literally no way that movie doesn't win like best wardrobe and best art design and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was just like, it's just absolutely phenomenal. Cause it doesn't matter where you are. There's like, why are there like perfectly cut logs and stuff like, you know, lined up in in these rooms, and you're yeah. just like, it's just so that shot, amazing. Though, is so and good that steady cam shot. Yeah. Not not to um, prolong this, but like Creed, I thought I when I heard they were making Creed, I was like, you got to be kidding me! They're just milking this Rocky franchise. Like now they got sure. uh, Apollo has a kid you know about. Rocky's gonna train him. Like that's so ridiculous. But the, so that movie really surprised me in how good it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And him directing very small, intimate moments between two people, like just sitting down having a meal, is very like, I don't know, like Scorsese to me. It's just calm. If you feel like you're sitting there and watching them. But then he also directs the fights, the boxing match. And that is really hard to do because these people are fake hitting each other. And he takes you in the ring. Like he, this guy is really good. And I think if, he mm-hmm. was willing to step into Star Wars. I think they would take him immediately. Imagine if he did like a Lando project. Ugh. Yeah. He would kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Kill it. Um. So here's what's funny is when the question got brought up, I was like, I don't want to say Ryan Coogler. Everybody's going to say Ryan oh, Coogler. Oh, really? Which is funny because <laughs> I don't think we've ever brought I mean, him up before. I mean, it is my answer. Have yeah. we brought him yeah. up before? I mean, in yes, I don't know. He was always my go-to okay. when go-to. The, this question. In, Mine was tight. We've never asked this question. I don't think directly, yeah. but I think like when it's like, what would be a good director to come in or something? I actually do pull him pretty often sure. among all directors. He's so now best. that this is so narrowed, um, I will say though, I looked at the list. There was a lot of good ones on there, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but I still, I would probably say if I had to pick one, it really would probably be the Russo brothers. Oh. Because I I I I love Black Panther. It was a great movie, but it wasn't Endgame. I it thought wasn't it was Infinity better than War Endgame. And Endgame. Really? Mm-hmm. I I just I did too. I think there's I think there's something I mean, like with any movie it it's very very difficult to land your characters, land your enemies, know what's supporting, get everything right. Sure. But there is a 
there is an accomplishment and an achievement in film that I'm still bummed that Endgame was not nominated for Best Picture because I don't know. It's just it's unimaginable how much work you have to think to land every one of these franchises. Sure, you're. It's not the the last Ant Man movie, but it is. You know, it's mm-hmm. like his character is that important. Sure. Um, the characters from this movie are that important. The characters from this movie are black. I mean, it's the end important. of Tony Stark and Black Widow and Captain America. Yeah. 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 I mean, and and just the way you have, I mean, it's arguable, like, who are the main characters in those movies? Um, but it's also like, if you want to say, you know, it's these specific characters maybe um the main core avengers like you know the captain america and the the iron man or whatever and the thor maybe but every other character in the mcu is supporting and they were supported perfectly you know Mm -hmm. like it's just it's it's absolutely phenomenal that those people were able to take on all that work and land it in a way that i don't think could have been done any better it's hard for me to disagree with that because of the success of it right yeah i just i didn't like fat thor or smart hulk you know that sort of stuff Mm -hmm. but i know but some people loved it yeah Yeah, and um i thought i'll tell you though if i was totally fine with all that yeah robert downey jr does another doolittle or two he may be like you know what guys maybe tony stark's not there (laughs) (laughs) they have time travel now so Yeah. yeah i was gonna say not it's not a knock on the movie but like he did figure out time travel in a matter of a couple, you yeah. know, uh, of His an evening or whatever. His daughter could show up and be like, I'm a genius now. Let me bring back dad. Yeah. Like, or or they could be like, what is this? And and it's like an old recording of Robert, you know, yeah. just the same that they <laughs> yeah. did with an old recording of his dad. And he sure. gave him the solution he needed. Yeah, this to- video, right. surveillance video of Tony Stark at the drive through <laughs> at Burger King ordering cheeseburgers. And we wanted to give it to you guys. <laughs> Yeah, and it was just something he was playing around with. Now, I mean, there's a lot of characters you could say, like Hank Pym, you know, would be a character who yeah. potentially could bring people back to life or whatever. There's so but. many Star Wars characters, too, that, like, could just, my, they could bring back. My other pick was going to be James yeah. Gunn, because Guardians is kind of like a Star Wars knockoff. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's a good choice. So I think he would do good, too. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah, some good ones. Um, you say Creed? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> all right. Agreed. That's it for one with the force. Let's head on to our next section, which is one of my favorite sections. Lacey, take it away. All right, guys. It's time for the Patreon pod race. So there are a lot. Punch lo- it. Oh. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Uh, there are a lot kidding. of ways <laughs> that you can support us. You can like this video, comment, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. Uh, and also, if you want more than that, which we put out a lot of content, but if you want even more, you can go to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Uh, we have different officer tiers, uh, all different levels based on how much you want to support, but every single level unlocks new access. We put out eight plus mini episodes a month. I think it's even more than that at this point. Like we put out two, three posts a day. Yeah. I can't stop. Guys. They're probably like, all right. All right. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough. Anyway, uh, no, it's just a really cool way to get engaged with the community. Uh, really fun space to just enjoy Star Wars and to talk about it all the time, which is what we like to do. So, our top tier, our generals get to be a part of the show. So every week we ask a general uh, a question and they get 60 seconds or less to answer that question. Um, and we give them a little spotlight on the show. So this week is General Neil. And we asked him, if you could be a stunt man, what stunt from an existing Star Wars movie would you want to do most and why? Neil, take it away. Hey, guys. Thank you for the great question. Um, this one was a bit challenging. Star Wars just in general has amazing stunt sequences in all their films, Uh, whether it's a sequence in Jabba's sail barge in Return of the Jedi, any of the Luke Vader fights, uh, if you want to think newer films, you have the throne room sequence, or even the fight on the Death Star wreckage, that was pretty awesome as well. But I gotta go prequels, I think the fight Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and against Darth Maul in Phantom Menace is definitely amazing. 
great sequence. Um, and who wouldn't want to do a stunt with the amazing Ray Park? So I think that's going to be my pick. Speaking of stunts, got to go shoot one right now. I'll be right back. I All right. All right, Neil. The theatrics of these videos are getting to a whole new level every week. Uh, John, what do you think? Um, the versatility of your son is just between his chewy impression <laughs> on our Why We Love Star Wars mm -hmm. video and now this. Um, I, I think we may see our next Luke Skywalker in the future. but Maybe. Uh, no, Neil, uh, I mean, it's it's you're the... You always you're like the M Night Shyamalan of our Patreon pod race because you do a twist <laughs> ending to all of your all of your videos, uh, and they're better than his. So good job there. Um, no, but I I think you did a great job. I too think uh, the mall fight would be awesome just because of the set. It would be cool to run around and, and do all those sorts of mm -hmm. things with Ray Park, um, and I'm sure Ray Park would agree. Um, but no, you did a great job, and uh, uh, your your video made me laugh. So that's the most important thing right now. And speaking of that, you know. You're 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 a doctor and you're you're doing some serious stuff dealing with these, this pandemic issue and you still have the time to still have fun and do this sort of stuff. So uh, I can't thank you enough for everything, man. You're the best. You're the you're what every Star Wars fan should be. You're such a good dude, and I'm honored that you are one of our generals on Patreon. So thank you so much, Neil. James. Yeah, John. The um, Shyamalan Milan uh, comparison is actually uh, yeah, sh sh uh, <laughs> Shalami sandwich. Uh, <laughs> the the comparison there is pretty good because I actually watched probably about eighty percent of this video and thinking I didn't do anything. That's weird. I like I would have thought he would have uh, <laughs> and, done something weird then, or different. <laughs> Yeah, and then boom, you get hit with the special <laughs> effects, and uh, and all sorts of stunt work. It's uh, it's pretty great. So uh, yeah, great video. Uh, I love it, and uh, good answer by the way, because uh, I think we asked something like that once before, and I I too said I would love to pull up out of the thing, flip over Maul, and cut him in half. You know, like uh, that's a that's a good stunt for sure. Yeah, and Ray's just like the best. <clears throat> so why wouldn't you want to do a stunt with Ray? Yeah. Did you guys give your answers yeah. on what you wanted to do yourself? Did we include that? Well, I didn't. I just. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, did, like, what him. stunt would you want to do? Well, I did just say the same. The same one. You okay, know, I didn't know if you had. I'd I'd answer that before I think. I'm oh, sure there's it. others that would come to mind that I'd be like, oh, that was that's a better idea. But for some reason, this stuck out in my head. It's one of the skiff guards flying off Jabba's barge headfirst into the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> and I into just the mattress that, pit i just think yeah i just think that'd be so fun yeah <laughs> you know i i think we did answer this before because Lacey's was jump off the thing and and grab onto the uh diving board and bounce back up we may have done this wasn't in it one with the force like months ago that or, might have been huh? yeah. my choice probably before rise of skywalker because it's definitely the tie fighter jump now like i would okay, think yeah. that would be so fun yeah. and that's coming from me who's terrified of heights but yeah. like, if I had people there that were professionals like Eunice, I would, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I'd be like, hell yeah, strap me in. Let's do it. Neil, <laughs> great question. Mm -hmm. uh, great answer. Well, we asked the question. So it great is a great question, question. me. <laughs> great, <laughs> great question, man. <laughs> great answer. Uh, we appreciate you so much. And uh, I 100% agree with you. Like I just said, Ray Park is the best. So it would be really cool to kind of be in a stunt with him um but yeah, yeah keep being awesome thank you for everything you're doing uh in your real life outside of the resistance as a doctor it means so much to everybody um not just there but in america <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're on the front line so we truly appreciate it um so yeah may the force be with you we're now going to john who's going to lead us into our interview yes it is time for an interview and we <laughs> Have a good one for you guys. It is Eunice Huthart, who was the uh, stunt coordinator for Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. And I'll, I'll just say this. You know, we you know, we had Yoshi Vu on uh, last last week. And there's a lot of people involved with bringing Star Wars productions to life. There are a ton of unsung heroes that help make Star Wars feel real to us. And another big part of that are the stunts. And we were absolutely thrilled to interview um, the person we feel 
stole the show on the the Skywalker Legacy documentary, and I know all fans feel that way. Um, mm-hmm. And I have to say this: uh, I'm going to go away from my little script spiel here. It she comes through even more so to me because we were able to have like kind of a one on one conversation with her here uh and i'm endeared to her more now uh more than i was watching that documentary and i am so happy we were able to interview uh eunice huthart because she is down to earth sweet charming and really excited for you guys to check this out so it's time let's throw it to us and eunice obi one once thought as you do Okay, so here we are with Eunice Huthart. Eunice, thank you so much for joining the Resistance broadcast today. We really appreciate it. No, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here, guys, I have to say. <laughs> um, so I want to kind of start because obviously everyone watching this uh, watches us for Star Wars, so we're going to talk a lot about um, your experience with The Rise of Skywalker, but I kind of want to start to how you got into the the industry and I know I did my research and my Wikipedia's and all that stuff, and I saw that you had won uh, like the UK version of Gladiators, right? Yeah. <laughs> the the funny thing was they what happened was they um, in the UK there was a writers' strike. Um, it was when the writers' strike was on with the um, SAG or Equity, whichever. And they so what what the um, and it's a bit like this that with the situation we're in now where there's no, no production on anything so I do wonder what's going to come in but they remade uh, the Gladiator show in the UK and um, so that's what happened basically I, I entered the uh-huh. third series of Gladiators UK and um, right. yeah it was it was a it was a great time I was very competitive with just the land but yeah it was a it was good fun so. You you won a competition and then they said you were so good we're gonna make you a gladiator. Is that like <laughs> is that too quick of a way of how that went or? Uh, no, it, pretty much that is the case. But they made me a gladiator for some live shows, um, and um, they, they it didn't sort of amalgamate back into the TV show being a gladiator. I, okay. I was involved doing the stunts by that point, so there was a bit of a conflict with stuff like that. But yeah. So, but I, I was a gladiator for some live shows that we did at, at, um, at arenas around the, around the UK. Wow. Okay. So when I was a kid, I used to play American gladiators in my backyard with Nerf guns and stuff. Um, I used <laughs> to you love come the. Over here and beat Americans. Uh, no, the Americans came over to the UK though. We we played the against. There. Yeah, we beat them over there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and why so your name was blaze why blaze did you get to pick that no i i wanted rage to be honest i wanted something a bit more aggressive like i'd, yeah. I'd pitched a few versions that day they, they were like no definitely not no they, right. they picked blaze i'm not quite sure why but they picked blaze well that, right. that was the one and then, i love the uh the dodgeball joke where they have uh blade and laser and then they go blazer <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um so then you got into stunt work and you your was your first movie goldeneye james bond yeah yeah goldeneye yeah it was just i was actually just seen on the show so um they the um, the producers had been trying to get a good very good stunt double for famke jensen because there was a sauna scene fight and uh, they wanted a real very similar body type and stuff like that so um uh, they'd seen me on Gladiators, so they asked me to come for an audition, which at the time I thought was my friends. I worked in McDonald's, big, big place at the time. Yeah. I was like big, big, making burgers all the time. <laughs> it was and, McDonald's, um, right? Yeah, McDonald's in Lord Street, Liverpool. Wow. wow. Yeah. Now, did you fight Pierce Brosnan or was it his stunt double? No, 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 I fought him. Yeah, it, P- Pierce is, it's funny because uh, he's a great guy, honestly, he was great. The, um, when we went down, as soon as I went down for the audition, I literally, they introduced me then to the director. It was all quite a whirlwind. It was quite surreal, really. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, they introduced me to Pierce. And Pierce had been watching Gladiators because it was on the TV at that time. Oh, wow. So he was like, 
oh my God, I know you. I was watching you on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> one of them. He asked me for my autograph, which was quite surreal. Because <laughs> he wanted awesome. to prove to his son that he'd met me because him and his son had been watching Gladiator. So oh, it, it was all like the most surreal environment you could ever imagine. And yeah. then, um, but we became sort of like, like, like good, not good friends. I wouldn't say I could call them up or anything like that, but I was at a party in mm. LA and he was at the party and I came up behind and I said, the last time I met you, you had to, I had my legs wrapped around your waist. And he was like, oh my God, it's Eunice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and that's literally what it was. <laughs> Yeah, that was great. Yeah, because that was her like finishing move. She would strangle. Yeah, yeah, she she yeah. she was the That's leg crush. So yeah, funny. so yeah, I had mad legs wrapped around Pierce's waist. It's, it's a terrible life sometimes, I have to say. <laughs> That's incredible. That's incredible. I think we already yeah. have our teaser clip for the episode. Um, <laughs> so before we get into Star Wars, James and Lacey, do you guys have any of uh, Eunice's other movies that she's done that you want to ask her about? Because there's a bunch that are like you so cool to me. You have done so many movies. It's kind of crazy. You did Titanic and then Harry yeah. Potter and then the other Harry Potter that is okay, but not the original. <laughs> <Harry Potter. laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> and then you've done like every Angelina Jolie movie. So I guess yeah. like out of those, have do you have any fun experiences or anything you'd like to share? God, there's so, I've got to say there's so many. It's it's hard to be specific. There's so many. Right. I had a great time in New York, I have to say. We did Salt in New York. I had a great time in New York. I loved it. Um, oh, God, it, it, Tomb Raider. The first Tomb Raider was great because it, it's... So to, to, in the film industry, to have a woman that, that's such a good lead, especially in them days, now it's different. You know, Margot right. Robbie doing Birds of Prey and stuff like that as Harley Quinn. Um, you've got like the the likes of Atomic Kitten, uh, Atomic Blonde when that came out. Um, so there's a lot of strong women leads, but back then mm. there wasn't. I, I'd say Angelina led, led the sort of led led, led the way That's on stuff point. like that uh, as like a, a strong female lead that you know isn't so concerned about the feminine and sexy look, is more concerned about being an action hero. So um, so Tomb Raider for for the female stunt double. We filmed that in 99, 2000. So that's 20 years ago. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's a favorite just in the fact that I got to showcase ability and have fun doing a various level of stunts. Which it's hard to pinpoint the funnest. Um, in the first Tomb Raider, I'd I say, love that movie. yeah, we had, just, oh, we had great fun doing it. I'd, I'd say, um, I don't know. A lot of people always talk about the dive on the needle, you know, when the needle comes up and yeah. then she has to dive out and land on it. Yeah. To be honest, that's probably a favourite because when we rehearsed that, I got knocked out. <laughs> 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 I was not clean out uh, oh. after the yeah, I got my timing wrong, so uh, it was a good job we rehearsed it because that the happened when we were shooting it. But uh, there's, there's so many, like, there's so many. Um, yeah, it's so hard, actually, without me thinking about it and looking through the movies to pinpoint particular moments sure so i gotta ask you real quick titanic did you yeah were you part of the group sliding down the ship yeah yeah yeah. i fractured (laughs) my teeth going on that there's always it you you think i should pack i swear right you think i should pack stunts in because every movie i go oh yeah that snapped me acl on that oh yeah i broke my teeth bone i fractured my skull on that one oh yeah i snapped my shin bone on that one it's like you think i should pack in and um, everyone goes, yeah, I think you should not do stunts, really. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, on that scene, I fractured my cheekbone. Yeah, I was one of the ones sliding down the, the poop there. That, that oh. was actually doing Titanic in Mexico in the environment we were in. It was all night. It, it was amazing, actually. It was amazing. But um, And we had the biggest stunt team probably ever amalgamated on a movie in the world at that wow. time. It was amazing. But yeah, no, that was great fun. Actually, Titanic, I think, is what is one of the highlights of my films so far, really. I have to say, it, you're one of the few people that I've been able to kind of brag to my wife about. Like, hey, this is the person <laughs> we're interviewing tonight. Like, check out this this laundry list of stuff that she's been involved with, you know, and it's 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 quite amazing to look at your filmography. And uh, I was actually thinking, you know, you, you work pretty closely, it looks like, with, with JJ, or you, you're familiar with him, you know, as working yeah. with the director. So I'd imagine you work with a lot of these directors. 
Um, with your experience on Star Wars, was there any particular director you've worked with in the past that you would love for them to do a Star Wars movie? Wow, that's a great question. Um, uh, I don't know. I Put don't on know. the spot. <laughs> I know. J- the, the, the thing about JJ is he knew the Star Wars world inside out and he, he knew the movie... Actually, what I respect about J.J. as a director is he co- he come into this film and he knew the project he wanted to make. There's so many films I do where the director is still trying to find the way, uh, find the characters, find this, find that. Like, with the history of Star Wars and also um, especially The Rise of Skywalker being the end of a trilogy, the characters were already established. So J.J. knew his characters, he knew sort of where they were placed, what we, we understood their fighting style and everything. So he could jump ahead then, like we, without other films that I've done where we're creating characters from day one, he could jump ahead and work on where them characters are emotionally and stuff like that. So like, um, I'd say JJ is actually one of the best directors I've ever, ever worked with. He just knew, he knew where his characters were. His creativity was off the hook. I've, I've never worked with anyone who can do what he did with camera, the camera moves he'd make and stuff like that. It was just amazing. But, um, oh, God, I, I don't know. That's such a great <laughs> question. I'd really have to sit back. You I'd circle back to it then. Bring it back. If you think of one later, yeah. pop it in. Yeah, Jim Cameron, I'd be interested in what Jim Cameron could do with it. The, yeah. I love that yeah. you call him Jim. Because we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, Jimmy, it's yeah. great. The great thing about being a scouser, right, is that um, you create noise wherever you go. There's no doubt about it. And um, mm-hmm. uh, Jim Cameron had, had already been to Liverpool. I think, if I remember right, he studied in Liverpool. So when we was on Titanic, of course, me being a scouser, I was always forefront and, and in his face all the time. And <laughs> so I had good banter with him and stuff like that. He's a pretty cool guy, as it happens. I, I, th- I think him with the Star Wars would be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they'd take it because he'd probably make them a lot of money. But, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. I'm sure he would. He's doing 12 more Avatar movies, so he's a little busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, you, you, you know, I'm a big JJ fan. I got this guy here, my little oh, JJ he's character. Love him. Um, I wanted to ask you in terms of like working with him because in the documentary, which before we started recording, you had said you haven't seen the, the documentary, right? The, the Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, no. No, I, I, I would uh, I would be like, oh, Eunice, what are you saying? And yeah, that would be like, yeah. Do I really, is that really what I do? When you I'm you come off well, to, I'll oh, say that. Yeah. My, yes. my daughter's watched this. She said it, yeah. She said the same. Uh, I, get, I get to, I cringe. I cringe at my own sound and my own voice, so. <laughs> I, I think everybody does though, right? It's yeah, like I guess so. Because you hear yourself a certain way in your head, and then you hear yourself, you're like, that's what I sound like to people? Like, I'm not talking ever again. Um, but it is kind of odd that that uh, after I watched that thing, to me, you were the takeaway from the, the documentary. Yes. The There's oh, a lot really that nice. goes on in that. But even though they kind of give you like a specific section – you were always throughout it. And I was like, oh, there she is again. There she is again. Yes. And I- I'm sitting there thinking, this is my first encounter with this person. Why does she keep popping out to me? And I think <laughs> it's because they made you interesting and I kept wanting to watch more scenes with you. So yeah. that, oh, that's, that's what great. I mean when Thank I say you. you come off well. Thank you. You were on all the locations. So you were on the resistance uh, base location. You were on the Kajimi planet. You were in the desert. You were in all these spots. Um, how how often were you directly working with JJ and and first unit and was there a back and forth in terms of him telling you what he wants out of the out of the shots and like him pressuring you to let the stunt people do it or him pressuring you to let the actors do it? What was that back and forth between you and him in terms of your leverage versus his uh, um, in, in doing it? We the the great thing about him is um, like I'll work with some directors and. Um, Sometimes he just don't let you in, and JJ let me in. So um, we'd always collaborate. So it it was, I'd say Guy Ritchie was the same, but on a complete different level. But Guy Ritchie let me in, and he'd let me create, and he'd let me drive, and he'd let me pitch, and he'd let me position, and stuff like that. And JJ did the same, and David Yates is the same. There's a lot of directors I've worked with 
um, Joe Wright is the same. And um, if you once you crack that relationship with the director, then you get a little bit of trust. And then as long as you don't mind, like some, like sometimes JJ go, now Eunice, I hate it. Ch- change it, get, get something better. Oh, but wow. we have such a relationship. It, it yeah. was cool. Like, it's not like some director go, I hate it, get it off my set and nothing like that. Like it, he was, um, it'd be like, no, I hate it, Eunice. Come on, you can think of something better. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I can. All right, JJ, what about this? What about this? What about this? What about this? Oh, wow. So, so that that's the sort of relationship we had, and um, yeah, I would just throw throw stones, throw throw. It's like throwing stones at a target all the time. And with JJ, when you hit the bullseye for him, he knew it, and I knew it, and then that then it would like it would develop even further. So that that sort yeah. of so I was I would go as far as say in the second unit was um, not like an action unit. JJ was shooting everything as much as he could, and then the second okay. unit would pick stuff up. So, um, so I would predominantly always be on main unit all the time. So yeah, it was great. Like, it was it was yeah one of the best experiences. Wow, I like hearing that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, let me ask you this question real quick. Um, how what what is your opinion on stars doing the stunts? Like, I do my own stunts versus stunt workers and people who are hired specifically to do those jobs. Yeah. Well, my, my brief, I, I always say to all the actors on any film that I'm doing, I'll, I'll get the actors together. I, for me, when I'm watching action, if I'm the second, the stunt double, um, and maybe it's just because I've got a, a closer eye on it because I know how it works now. But the second the stunt double's involved and I know it's a stunt double, I detach immediately. So for me, if the actors are doing it and I'm seeing the actor's face and I'm seeing the emotion and I'm seeing the tension and everything they're thinking and feeling, it's more to me. It's more to me. It just feels real. It's it's how I would want to see it all the time. So um, so my brief to every actor is I want you to do as much as you can. But if you can't do it, you know, we'll do it. And when, especially Adam Driver, when I gave Adam that brief, uh, Adam was like, no, 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 I'll do it all. And I went, no, listen, Adam, you'll, you'll do it if it's good because we're going to set a benchmark and that's where we want the action to be. And we do want it like enthralling and sort of um, character related, but it has to be good. And if you don't put the work in, it won't be good. And he was like, I'll be doing all the action. And, it, and he did, he did everything. <laughs> he, he was brilliant. And, and to be fair to Daisy, there wasn't much that Daisy didn't do, if I'm honest. Like Daisy did 99, sort of 0.1 percent of all the action and and um adam did 99 point well not adam did 100 <laughs> <laughs> oh, percent was there do. was there an adam driver stunt guy on set just like i'll be in my i'll be having coffee oh. it's all was a bit like that he'd come out every now and then to make the tea for us <laughs> <laughs> it was we were like you spare we're dead busy oh yeah let's get him yeah make, make the tea come on on the radio come on do the tea run mate it's like do i still have to wear the cape though when i bring the coffee uh, okay. no yeah, that, that's not a, that, that wasn't allowed when adam was around you can't right. <laughs> uh, so in adam amazing. would think well why, why why is he dressed why is he dressed does he do like, no 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 we just made him wear it to make the tea for us adam i promise <laughs> It's funny you say that because one of our most popular questions we got from people was, what is Adam like? Because in the documentary, you talk about how he kind of argued with you a little bit. And he'd be like, no, Kylo Ren doesn't do that. And you'd be like, just, you need to open up more power. And he'd be like, no, 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 no. So people like to know, what is it like working with him? Do you have any actual funny moments with him? Because people have rumored to say that he does have a great sense of humor. He's had, he's a brilliant sense of humor. It's brilliant. (laughs) Honestly, he's a brilliant sense of humor. If if every actor I had worked as hard as Adam, um, a, a, every movie I did, I would be very very happy about. So, I wow. couldn't say there's nothing negative I could say about Adam. Yes, he's very intense. Yes, he's very character related. Yes, he protects his character like mad. But that's what you would want. Why wouldn't you want that as a stunt right. coordinator? Right. Why wouldn't you want somebody who's so attached to their character that they want to give that hundred percent every single second? Like Adam would be infuriated. He, he would we do an action scene, and then if a punch missed or his reaction was a bit slow or something like that, we'd be like, "Well, Adam, that that was it, or that was off." Like he'd get so angry with himself for doing it. So you sort of have to. Sometimes I would have to say, Adam, the camera didn't really come round fast enough because I didn't want him to think that it oh, was. Oh right. 
Yeah, blame yeah, the because, camera guy. Yeah. Yeah, because he gets so <laughs> mad with himself and then his body oh, yeah. would tense up and then he wouldn't move as fluid and stuff like that. But yeah, he's so, like, I love it. That that focus turns me on. I love it. I love that focus. It's great. Like, Jeff behind the camera is not going to smash the camera if you tell yeah, him yeah. to do the angle again, but Adam Driver <laughs> no. may smash something. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be like, yeah. More, more. All right, Dave, we're blaming you for that one, but we'll blame Fred for the next one. (laughs) So that so in the documentary, which, again, you haven't watched and that blows my mind, because if if I was the the star of the show on a Star Wars documentary, I'd be like, come on over. Come check this out. Seriously. Yeah. But Adam Driver did say that for us, a stunt coordinator and he he didn't say this was new to him, but it did seem like it's unorthodox um, in the industry, maybe. He said, you are a character first stunt coordinator versus the physicality stuff. So it's not just hit your mark and jump or whatever. It's you, He said, you are character driven first. And he really yeah. appreciated that. What what does that mean? And and to the approach of your work, what does that mean, him saying that? What does that exactly mean? Uh, it means a lot to me if he says that, I have to say. Um, you got to watch it. They say a lot of nice things about you. Oh, he said it. Yeah, my for sure. thing. <laughs> Lovely. I, I don't know. I'll start watching. I go, ah, oh, turn it off. Turn it off. Is that what I sound like? No, I can't watch it. <laughs> um, no, it means a lot to me. It's um, when I'm on set, like when I'm watching it, sometimes I'll go, mm, like, I'm not just Adam. Like, this is in general. I'll go to the actor. Like, Charlie Hummond. It is pretty much a bit like Adam Driver for hard work. Mm-hmm. And um, I'll go up and I go, I'm watching you. I'm not watching the character. And I'm watching you just rehearse. Now, like, you're in costume and we're doing it. And we've got all the effects. But I'm still watching you as if we're in the rehearsal. I'm not seeing the character. We've rehearsed it enough. I need to I need to feel like this when, when, when you know, oh, we're wow. watching it. And I, Adam would deliver that all the time. So um, it, it's like, uh, like... When I first watched Star Wars as a kid, we went out in the street and we played Star Wars. And I believed I was Darth Vader. I know I would always be Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dark Star. And, and I, I believe. Yeah. But I believed I was Darth Vader. And I don't know. I, I don't know if if just good fortune put me in the stunt industry and it, it, it was like whether I was always destined to be in the film industry. I don't know. But... If I don't believe it when I'm watching it right there, not even through the camera, I'll be watching it. If I don't believe it, then it's not a good shot and I'll always ask for it to go again. And that's the way it is to me. Because he he painted that as though it was a unique trait to you as a stunt coordinator. So I don't know that he's... That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I don't know that he's experienced um, that that often. And and I don't know that he's done a lot of action stuff either, to be fair, besides Star Wars. But... He didn't yeah. say that about uh, prior stunt corners, so that's. Yeah, oh, no, it's really nice. I I appreciate yeah. that a lot. Actually, he he was. If every act that I work with is is uh, Adam Driver's professionalism, my my life would be that easy from here on in. <laughs> Sounds like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, he has a military background. I think he's very like into to discipline, and physicality, and. It's funny, he had the gun once and uh, he was running with the gun, and I forgot he had a military background. And I was like, oh, hey, hey Adam, you know when you got the gun. And I started going through the silly old drill of, yeah, make sure that your finger's there. And then I was looking, I was like, oh, shit, yeah, he's fucking he's military, <laughs> isn't he? He's probably looking at me going, shut up, you idiot. It's <laughs> incredible. It's great. Wow. So then flip over to um, Daisy Ridley, because another part of the documentary shows you really trying to push her on some stunts where she has to leap over things and that sort of stuff. And you were like rooting for her. Um, yeah. It was almost like a pep rally, but also a, a coach sort of thing. Like it could yeah. have been a separate movie, Eunice and Daisy and like a coming of age story. But um, <laughs> what, what, what was it like working with her? You said she did about 99% of her own stunts. Yeah, um, we yeah. all, we all expect Adam driver military guy to do that, but Daisy really also just bringing it. Uh, can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah. It, da- Daisy actually is a, um... She underestimates her, her own ability. Sometimes you are just convincing her, her brain, because her body can do it. She can do it. Physically, she can do it. She's very, very capable. So sometimes you are just getting it, and you're getting it in the zone. Sometimes I did have to say to Daisy, for your first one, let's forget the character. Let's just make sure you, your physicality will, will do it. Okay. Um, and it, it's a different attack with Daisy, because... 
between Adam and Daisy, their mentalities are two completely different people. I could show Daisy a 20 beat fight on video. I could show it on video and then she could pick up her lightsaber and she could start rehearsing that fight straight away. Oh, wow. But, yeah. Like, it's like she's got this choreography, photographic memory. It's really, it's really weird. Wow. Like, I've never known anyone like it. And I, I, so the boys who did the um, the other two movies with Daisy, I, I called them up when I'd got The Rise of Skywalker. I called the guys up before and I was saying, look, I'm doing this, uh, you know, like like give give me give me the the skinny on everything and um, oh, they smart, said yeah. they they said Daisy when you're teaching a choreography there's is it's like she could learn a sixty beat fight in like half an hour I was like yeah oh, whatever no. that's crazy and then but then then when it when it came to it she could I was like oh oh yeah the, <laughs> but the guys been lying on that you really can so wow. um like that that's pretty good and then so the great thing about Daisy is that. Her sort of ability to uh, remember choreography, she would get to her character very early when she was doing her fight training. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, here, like we, with Adam, his fifth or sixth um, rehearsal would be, right, Adam, you know the choreo, we know where your feet are, you know where your energy, you know where your hips come in and all that. All right, let's start seeing Carla then blend in there. But with Daisy, second or third all day long, like like uh, Ray would be coming into it all the time, and we'd be looking for wow. the Ray beats, and we'd be looking for like, because it's all you can choreograph any fight, but you have to find where the character can be within that fight, um, and that's sort of the exciting part for us when we bring the actors in. So, um, and then Daisy, when she do anything physical, it's like uh, Daisy was doing this scene, and I said, Daisy, I just feel like I'm just watching. Like anybody just climbing up this, uh, don't forget like you're a thousand feet up and, and you're doing this and the thing slips and you, mm -hmm. you you know, there's jeopardy there. And then you just have to remind it and the next take is a complete different take. So yeah. uh, two two different characters, two different artists and two different uh, frame of minds, the way they work, but both complementary in what we were always trying to achieve all the time. Wow. Yeah. So That's the amazing. big kind of Ray scene is the jump over the, the TIE fighter. So can you tell us about how yeah. that came about? Did you kind of help come up with that? Was it JJ yeah. and was like, hey, how can we do this? Like, how did that come about? Yeah, that started with, with we were doing various different um, show and tells for JJ. He wanted the, the it, it was it was a small idea that just developed bigger and bigger. Like originally she was just gonna stand there and then leap up, run at it. Like originally she was going to run at it and do it. And then, uh, you know, with collaborating with JJ, we got it that she turned and then she was running away from it with the time. And, and then it gave her more air time because if she was running at it, the time would have been dead quick. But if she's running away from it, when it comes and she goes up, you know, you, we develop more time with it. And then, um, God, we did so many different versions of that. And then JJ found the one that he really liked. And, um, yeah, and... Um, we eventually shot that actually with the stunt double Katie McDonald. We shot it with, with mm -hmm. Katie. Right. But, um, but we did do it. We did actually, do, it's just with the artist, there's too many variables. And if she doesn't come out it quick enough or her legs aren't underneath quick enough, like I would worry about the artist spraining her ankle and it was early in the shoot and stuff like that. So, um, so we did do it with, uh, we did do the whole gag with um, Daisy. But, but we just didn't land it as hard. But through, through the cut, through the edit, we've used most of Katie in the edit. But it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's a cool gag, isn't it? So oh, Daisy yeah. actually That's did amazing. it once? Yeah, don't, no, da Daisy did it quite a few times. We just wouldn't ah. land Daisy as hard as we, we would land Katie. Right, she'd sure. come down with that superhero landing. Yeah, just because it was just a bit too hard. If she come in wrong, it's definitely, like, like you'll jeopardize. Um, I mean, the... It's almost because uh, Katie would have done the rehearsal so much and we could land it in a bit harder. So, yeah, but no, no, they, they, Daisy well with them could have done that. I just wouldn't have wanted to land her so hard. I would have worried about her. That was a little That's bit. so cool. During the documentary, yeah. that was the, the moment where the camera kind of shoots to you and you just said, like, I love my job. I love this. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's, it's funny because when we shot that, we didn't think we were going to do it that day. Um, they planned it, but JJ loved the light. He just looked at the sun, he loved it. He goes, right, yeah. I want to shoot Ray V TIE Fighter. 
So we, we're all sitting having a cup of tea. And then it came over the radio. <laughs> they were going to shoot Ray V TIE Fighter. We were all sitting around. We were all looking at each other going, whoa. So we were all like going down and getting the crane arm up and all of that. And uh, wow. yeah, it, was, it was great. Yeah, it was really cool. I love how yeah. on the spot that is then. It's not It's not always this planned thing like, okay, on Tuesday we're doing it. It's like, you know what? The sun looks good. Yeah. Let's, crane. Right. let's, yeah. let's go. I love yeah, that. Yeah, it was. It, it was one of them. It was like the sun's cool. Like we, we definitely weren't planned to do it. We, right. we were at wow. the other side. We were in Jordan. We were right over the other side. It was about a 20-minute car ride back. So we were oh. like in the in the jeeps going there. To festival That's people. amazing. <laughs> that was great. And he, even Katie was like, oh, what, what? Like, they were like, yeah, it was mental. We were all just sitting around having a cup of tea. We were like, poof, over there. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Is there any pressure with you as a stunt coordinator who appears, now that you're on the other side of it doing coordinating, like probably, I assume when you're a stunt performer, you wanted to do as much as they let you do. And now that you're yeah. the stunt coordinator, it sounds like you want the actors to be able to do as much as they can do. Is there pressure from the director or like the producer saying like, don't hurt my actors, like, I don't care if you do a stunt person. Is there any kind of push back and forth there between you and them because they have the investment in the actors and the time and the schedule that needs to be met and you wanting to have the actor be genuinely doing stuff? Is there any kind of push there? Uh, not really. It's 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 more or less all dealed out in prep. So in prep before the schedule happens, it's all more or less always dealt with. To, to be honest, it's more the actors. So if, um, like Angelina, I've worked with Angelina so many times now, and um, she's very capable and she wants to do everything herself all the time. Okay. So the only one really, be, because we're always scheduled and we're always scheduled as this will be the stunt double day or we'll we'll do the stunt double at the, t the head of the day and we'll do the actor later on after they've done the emotional scene or something like that. So normally it's always scheduled. But sometimes you'll get it where the actor will be like, no, 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 I, I really want to do it. And then it'll be the insurance. The insurance will go, we are not covering an actor to do that. Right. Uh, okay. So they're, they're the bad guys. Not the bad guys for me, because sometimes I'll use it in my favor. I'll go, the actor doesn't do it as good as the stunt double. You've got to do me a favor here and tell the actor that she can't do it. <laughs> because, uh, not that that's the case with anyone so far, but I can use that as a tool. But um, right. it's... Um, it's normally the insurance you just... Uh, so Tom Cruise on his films, because uh, there's a colleague of mine who always does Tom's films, Wade Eastwood, and uh, Tom overrides all the insurance. Yeah, he, oh, he, he, yeah. he did on Mission yeah. Impossible when he like yeah. broke he, his foot and like all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, he overrides all the insurance on it all. Yeah, because yeah. he Eunice, wants have to you heard that? Have you heard that Tom's going to space? I read that. Is it today or <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, he's, he's working with space, Elon Musk and SpaceX because he wants to shoot a movie slash stunt or whatever in outer space. He's got to find wow. that next thing. He did the, what is it, like the halo jump 106 times. He's got to find that next. Yeah, he keeps I going know. higher in the sky. I know. <laughs> you got to give that guy his due. You know, he works damn hard, honestly. Yeah. Like yeah. in the industry, Tom, Tom Cruise, it, it could be one of the best stunt people you would ever make, but he's an actor that is doing the best stunts you could ever make as an actor. <laughs> like you got to give it to him. He works damn hard. Jeez. You just made me think of that uh, MTV skit with him and Ben Stiller and Ben Stiller yeah. playing his stunt double. Yeah, he's great, <laughs> so wasn't he? He's great. Um, okay, now biggest difference working on a Star Wars film versus any of the other films of that type of genre that you've done what's the biggest takeaway difference that uh you came away with like wow that was marginally different than having done this or that um it was the i, I wouldn't even say it's the franchise it's the um it's the expectation to deliver for the fans it it's always it, i became very aware especially with JJ, that he was so eager that we were honoring the, we were honoring the characters and we were honoring the history of the Star Wars and we were honoring what the fans wanted to see all the time. Right. It became a lot of that. Uh, and that, that's not in, in, in any movie we've ever done. That's never, I'd say in Tomb Raider, they, there was a little bit of it because we, we were mm. emulating, it was one of the first movies where we were taking off the computer game and delivering it into a film. Right. Right. So there, there was some sense of honor and what people's expectations were. But in Star Wars, that, that was magnified 
massive, much more yeah. massive, honestly. Wow. Yeah, massive. But it was J- JJ and Kathy Kennedy were very, very, um, very, very aware of what they wanted to deliver for the the Star Wars fans out there. I have to say. That's good to hear. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. seems like even in the documentary, everyone just had us. We're pulling in the same direction to try to make yeah. it the best they could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 James, were you gonna say something? Um, no, not particularly. <laughs> no, I I, you were to... <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're kind of on the rise of Skywalker kick. I I have other questions. I think about you know when it comes to just stunts in general. But um, go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I, I was gonna. I, I'll do the. Uh, I'm gonna run through five people, and I want you to give me one sentence to describe them. Okay, I love this. <laughs> um, we haven't talked about him yet. Oscar Isaac. A uh, very professional, pretty good actor, very nice, very good looking. <laughs> okay. He is good looking. <laughs> John Boyega. Oh my god, he should be the first black James Bond. He's amazing. He's I'm so, sure he so that. he's so capable, and his timing of sense of humor is amazing. Oh, okay. that's a, that's a great casting. I love that. Yeah, I I'm hope sure so. he would love that too. Another friend. Uh, I I really want that to happen. It would be amazing. Me too. <laughs> I'm on that team. And then he could bring you on to do the stunts. <laughs> you, you'll go full circle back to James Bond. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> Call up Pierce. I'll be, be like, the end of your career. I'll retire then. I'll retire then when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Okay. Um. Daisy Ridley. Um, amazing lifelong friend. I hope I always cross paths with her and such a pure person. That is very sweet. Um, Adam Driver. Um, if ever I'm going to go into a bar and there's going to be a fight, I want Adam Driver standing next to me. <laughs> that is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> He's gigantic, so I That's would imagine fantastic. that makes sense. He's a yeah. unit. He is a unit. <laughs> All right, I have two more. Now, I don't know if you, how much you worked with this person, but uh, Ian McDiarmid. Who played? Who Palpatine. he played? Palpatine. Oh, God, he the was Emperor. great. He was great. He was him. Um, it was really weird. It's like he was always Palpatine, even when he wasn't in costume, he was Palpatine. It was really weird. <laughs> Yeah. Like method actor or just like his personality? No, He's like, not method. Give just me like, coffee. It was just the way he'd move around. It was more his body and his mannerisms and his physicality. Like, no, he was great. And we we, we threw him around quite a bit, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, um, his code name was 13, which I had to... It got drilled into me because I kept saying Palpatine bit early on when we were rehearsing and I got told off so many times. So he actually was always 13 to me. So even when I would see him, that's why I actually didn't even know his name. Because he goes to be 13. <laughs> if you'd have said 13, I'd have known exactly who he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> why 13? Did they say why 13? Yeah, I think I'm lucky 13. Because if you mess yeah, him, you're lucky. Number. Oh. Yeah, that <laughs> Yeah. Wow, that's funny. All right, I lied. There's going to be three more. Now it makes sense uh, why we were like, Palpatine, you're like, who? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 13. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, Anthony Daniels. Um, intense, um, always, he, he would protect, actually, he would protect C-3PO so much, you had to respect him. And also, historically, he's there from day one, so he had everybody, everybody was in awe of Anthony Daniels on set. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay, very cool. Um, uh, Jonas Sotomo, who played Chewie. Well, the funny story about Yunus, right, is that it sounds like Yunus, yeah. And the amount of times that, like, a driver had come up to me going, okay, Eunice, where are you going? I'd go, eh? I'm going to stage two. He'd be like, no, I'm taking you into London. I'd be like, no, it's not me. That's, that's Chewy, the other Eunice. <laughs> 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 the amount of times that our names get mixed up on set was insane. Sometimes I'd be dragged to set, and they'd be like, and I'd be like, what do you want, JJ? He'd be like, no, no, where? what are you doing here? And it would always be Chewy that they were after. So it, it happened quite a lot. But, oh, uh, wow. no, he was great. He understood the um, he understood the chewy physicality so much. I'd right. say when I was on set the first time that I was like, "Oh fuck me, I'm on Star Wars." That was when Chewie walked on set in costume. Aww. Yeah, that's, it was that's amazing. It. That's it was it. amazing. 
I've got to say, like, he, even me and all the boys, we just stood there all, like, jaws dropped like that, like, just looking at him. And he was great. Uh-huh. He, he he respected Chewie so much. It was really cool. Yeah, he was great. Because everybody always talks about how they hug Chewie. Oh, we were, everybody hugged him. Everyone hugged him. <laughs> <laughs> we're costume designers like, you're matting his hair. Get off of the <laughs> No, that hair was pretty matted, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> was like, it really? Bloody carpet. I was like, this costume yeah. that cost thousands looked like a bloody carpet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the last one on this this round here, JJ Abrams. Oh, the love of my life, the best director. I don't know. He's, I've been so spoiled with JJ. Um, I've been so spoiled with him. I've actually, I've never known anyone to be so nice all the time. I would get emails like I would wake up and I'd be like, because I, I would think of things in my sleep. So I'd wake up and before I'd forget, I'd, I'd email it straight away. I think no, JJ's not going to, no one's going to have the phone on or he's not going to be awake and be like 3.30 in the morning. And I'd be like pitching an idea and I would get a, a reply straight away, like off JJ. <laughs> and it, I'd be like, that's ridiculous. But that happened all the time. And I'd sometimes I'd say, don't you ever, ever sleep? And he was just like, <laughs> I don't know, I love them. I just, uh, I miss him. I miss him. Right. Yeah, no, he's great. He's great, like. Yeah, I've had a few, so I'm a little bit... Uh, I can see how red my face is. I've got red wine to each now, haven't I? Yeah. You're good. You're good. Um, okay, now we want we do have a, a few questions from our listeners we want to get to, but before we do that, I want to ask you, was there one stunt in The Rise of Skywalker that was very difficult to capture that almost frustrated you or something that was almost unable to be done? Like, was there any one single difficult one that you're like, man, I'm glad we finally f- finished that one? Um, not really. It was, um, we were so well prepped on everything. Uh, Jordan was a bit tasking because we was, um, we were so against time in Jordan. That's why it was really good that, that David did the TIE fighter because the, the sunset was never that good after that. So, um, Jordan, we were constantly just jumping. Yeah, it's right, it's right. We're doing this, we're doing this. So J- Jordan was a bit tasking in that sense, just because we had to get it in the time scale we had. But um, no, we were so well rehearsed on stuff. Um, now everything was always good. The, the, my most enjoyable scene was the pair fight um, between um, Ray and uh, Kylo Ren uh, the when water. they had the, uh, mm. when they had the final fight on the pier. Uh, that yeah. was my most enjoyable. I didn't want that scene to end. I, I loved it. We had everything. We had, we had like we were outside. We had drones. We had cranes. We had water tanks. We had explosions. Like I, wow. I, I loved it. I loved it. And the actors did everything. They did everything there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't want that scene to end. If I'm honest, the actors did because they were soaking wet, freezing <laughs> yeah. the whole time. <laughs> I was, yeah. I was all wrapped up. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> there was in the documentary there was one part where they're talking about how a big wave just went over Daisy and she just tensed up but didn't say anything and then after she was just yelling about it she was yelling at Dominique I think his name was yeah she was she was yelling at Dom <laughs> she was like he did that on purpose I was like I know he was supposed to he was supposed to get hit with a wave that's the way it is It's, uh, uh, it's she, she read in that that she was like this close to being like really convenient, seriously losing it, you know. <laughs> she was like, um, like I, could she was see, I, it together, I wanted but... it to feed off it because I could right. see it, I could see yeah. it in it, and I was like, Bring this out. Like, I was sort of pressing the buttons a little bit, if I'm honest, because I wanted sure. it to keep that sort of mentality and that, yeah, take it out when we're fighting, take it out, take it out on them when you're fighting and stuff like that. I loved it. I did well, I didn't want it to. I end. like that though, you feeding off of the environment and that sort of thing. Is that a normal yeah. type of thing when you're doing movies? It, um, it, it was there. It was, I, I remember when we were doing King Arthur, I remember, um, I remember actually, uh, Charlie Hummond, uh, getting a little bit annoyed because he didn't, didn't, um, he didn't get some of the choreography right and he got really pissed off. And then his next fight, I was like, that was better because you was carrying some of your your uh, like annoyance at not getting your previous shot right. You carried mm. it through, and your fight looked different. And then, uh, so like, I always try and pick up on stuff like that because I can see the difference. Oh, that's so, yeah. awesome! Yeah, yeah, that, that's sort of uh, 
I guess, uh, uh, a certain level of observational skills that you have to be able to read them and know that you're not pushing them too hard to the point that they walk off the set, but you, you get the most no. out of them. I've had that a couple of times that would have been like a, yeah, I'm about to back off a bit now. I think I'm upset. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> on Star Wars or other pictures? On other pictures. Like, like yeah. there'll be, um, uh, we, we did a fight in Troy. I remember on Troy, we were doing a fight with an actor and um, I wasn't coordinating then. I, I was just, I was performing. But <clears> I was fighting with the actor and they were like, uh, yeah, it was that? And I was like, that nah, is pretty shit, really. I'll be honest. They were like, no, 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 he was better than that. I was like, no. I've got to say, mate, if you don't want that in this in the picture. If that's in the movie, I'll give you a thousand pounds, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> um yes, yeah, so, so that fight, um Anthony Daniel said that was six days. Is that right? That that took that long to, to do overall? Yeah. yeah and yeah, you yeah. loved all of the all of it. I didn't want it to end. I, I honestly, amazing. I didn't want it to end. Everyone was like made up when it was finished because we were starting because we uh, we didn't have much light them days. So what we were doing was getting there. The crew was getting there like about five thirty in the morning because we wanted to be so prepped for our first shot so we could maximize maximize all the daylight hours. So our yeah. days were starting at something like half five in the morning and finishing at something like half past six, you know, yeah. like in in the evening and. Um, yeah, no, I loved it. Uh, yeah, I, I'd, I, I'd, I'd shoot st- stuff like that. I would shoot every day on a movie for like four months. Like, like mm-hmm. if it was like that, I loved it. Wow. All right. No, no, <laughs> dead lucky, aren't I? So yes. on the other yeah. side, how was the sled at the end of the movie? <laughs> how was that? The sled. I know. That was all. The sled was all wired as well. It was all on wires. We had like a push pull system on it, but um. <laughs> I was, but the, the sled was paying homage to one of the opening scenes. Obviously, I think everyone gets onto that. It was paying homage to the opening scene when we see Ray in the, uh, on the sled in the uh, in Force Awakens. So, uh, right. yeah. So uh, I think it was at the end of the movie. Days was a bit tired, and she was a bit intimidated by like it. it. But <laughs> yeah, we just we get on. In the end, we were like, uh, we'll just do the same speed. Days, you, you, you did it nice and slow. We just did the same speed. But as soon as we drunk camera, we we just they were twice as fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, was it a matter of her, not, right. <laughs> was it a matter of her um, like worried about like hurting herself or was it, uh, she was afraid of looking bad or. I think it's more with Daisy. I think it's more, she's not scared of hurting herself. She's, it, she's really, I mean, she had her knuckles wrapped and her hands wrapped quite a lot of times when we were in rehearsal and when we were fighting. I think it was more that um, she just didn't think that she could look cool doing it. Oh, okay. That type yeah. of thing. So what, yeah. once she gets that confidence where she'll look at playback and I'll be like, look, you didn't have to like sway over there. Just let, mm-hmm. let this thing go. And then she'll be like, oh, I see it. So it was all right. The, the first couple was a little <laughs> bit. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, I, I, I mean, it comes to where I go, look, Daisy, we're just going to tie it on it. And you're just going to go down. So let's just have a good time. <laughs> doing it. That's the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> um, do you guys have anything else for units before we get to questions from... Uh... Patrons? No, let's get to the fan stuff. Sure. Okay. Um, Lacey, you want to fire uh, fire these off? Oh, you want me to? All right, I, I can. Oh, I can do it. it okay, matter. you go. Okay. Uh, now, some <laughs> of these we may have touched on already, but we got to hear from the, these peeps because they love you just as much as we do. Uh, um, great. And I feel so terrible. Seriously, I just said peeps, the most but... questions we've ever gotten for someone on the show. I yeah. Was... Oh, really? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm I'm really well, flattered. We were. I am. I was when you responded to me saying like, "Sure, I'll come on." I was like, "Oh, oh, wow, James, you got to make that T-shirt, man." <laughs> um, it it's made. <laughs> Actually, can you pull amazing? The, can you pull up the image uh, <clears throat> and show it to her? He's I, like, nah, dog. He's like, I can't how? Do that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know your phone or something. But um, uh, no, it's recording video. <clears throat> okay, well, we'll send it to you. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, they they we were so excited to reveal to them that we were having you on that it was just we were so happy. So this has been great. But um, this first one comes from Bethany. She goes by the name Beer Fet. So cheers, Bethany. Yeah, cheers, Bethany. <clears throat> <laughs> she once drank a beer out of a Boba Fett helmet. She um, sounds like the. I need to go on a night out with Bethany by the sound of it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> 
She asked you what percentage of stunts in The Rise of Skywalker used stunt doubles versus the actors, if you had to gauge Oof. it overall. Not much. I've got to say, um, I'd say on the whole of the movie, stunt doubles v uh, actors, I'd say was 95% actors, 5% stunt doubles. Wow. That's awesome. And yeah, is that, yeah. Is that typically not that ratio? Um, it, it depends on the, the thing about everything about um, uh, the Rise of Skywalker was character related. So it's not like, like um, it's not like you'll do a car chase where I know we did the speeder chase, but just we had the actors on the speeders all the time. The speeders were right. dead safe, mm-hmm. so the actors yeah. did it all. So, um, so it's not like you say like you not not like Fast and the Furious where you're going to do a car chase and the whole car chase will be run by stunt doubles. And then you'll just be cutting in with the actors. You mean that wasn't the case. Vin Diesel? <laughs> 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 but, um, the thing about the Rise of Skywalker was that, um, yeah, it, it, all action-related stuff. If if you watch the movie, and um, it literally, there's very few times where I would I would pause it and say, right, the next say two seconds is stuntable. There's very few occasions of that. I mean, mm-hmm. of course. Action-wise, all the stormtroopers is is um, stunt doubles and stuff like that. So, um, and a lot of the rebel fighters were stunt doubles when they, when all the fight things. But if we're looking at stunt doubles, I'd say yeah, ninety-five percent was actors, five wow. percent stunt awesome. doubles. That's really cool. Yeah, it's cool, that, isn't it? That is that is so awesome. Um, especially like in the documentary, just showing how complex some of it is. It's just incredible. Uh, yeah. that no one, no one was in. Uh, their version of Stanford Hospital with a busted ACL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, okay, this next one is from uh, Stephen Bowman. Hey, Stephen. Uh, he asked, um, what are some of your favorite stunts throughout film history that have either inspired you or that you think are just really awesome? Hey, Stephen, great question. Um, what, one, of the things, one of the things that made me want to become a stunt coordinator is I would do a stunt for a film, and then when I'd watch it, it didn't, feel like it didn't feel like watching it the impact didn't feel like it, it showed it the way the camera angles were or the way the, the the way it was edited so one of the reasons I did get into stunts is to to try and make sure camera angles were in a better position related to the stunt and um, one of my favorite stunts that I performed where I felt the energy that I was delivering uh, to do the stunt was on the beach when uh, we did the jump off the waterfall. So um, on that that particular stunt, we had to, um, it was about 78, I think 76 to 78 feet high, but 33 feet out was uh, only a foot of water and then it was solid rock. You had to clear 33 feet, 33 feet out um, to then, and then we had a plunge pool of about 22 feet. So, um, so when we did that, that that stunt, you had to make sure that you you cleared it and then you got enough energy going out. And I just remember doing it like I'll never. It's one of my favourite stunts, really, as a stunty because uh, my heart was racing. I knew there's no room for error, and it just felt real and death defying a little bit to a certain level. So. Um, and the way Danny Boyle shot that one, because he tracked along with me as I leapt off and stuff like that, it, it, I, it felt like how I felt. When I watched it, that was how I felt. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so so I loved it. I learned a lot of Danny Boyle, actually. That, actually, Danny Boyle to do Star Wars. Um, there it is. Right. Came back. Hey. Yeah, right. I love it. Hey. <laughs> I I'm afraid of heights. So, so am I. That's terrifying. Uh, that 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 gave me a little chill. Uh, hearing that. Um. Wow. Okay. But great answer. Um. The beach. Yeah. What was that like? Was that like oh one oh two? When was that? I think it was I earlier. Um, I, oh, earlier. I think it was earlier. Yeah. I think it oh, was okay. earlier. Yeah. It was about because Titanic was ninety seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I did Titanic, then I went on to that, and then it wasn't long after that I went on. Yeah, I bet it was. I bet, it was, I bet the beach was about ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Oh wow! Okay, Leo. Um, all right. Uh, last one from uh, one of our resistance officers is uh, Mark at the Kind Awakens. Uh, he is in Hawaii. Mark. He asked, "Which actor impressed you the most on the Rise of Skywalker, and why?" Adam Driver. 
uh, yeah. just because yeah. um, he never he never left his character behind ever ever wow. not even ever not even walking through a door or stepping up a step or walking into a room <laughs> so really? probably Adam Driver yeah wow I just keep thinking intense. of that stunt guy in the costume just sitting on the side yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just with the tea bag in the cup just anybody <laughs> I remember it's once like... he, um, they they were doing a wig fitting for him uh, we never used them but of course all the gear has got to be standing by just in case and um, we said oh we want him to rehearse with I can't remember why. I think we wanted them to rehearse in the costume. I wanted to rehearse in Adam's costume to see if he could do these moves before we showed them to Adam. Right. Mm. So, and then it just coincided with a wig fitting for the stunt guy. So he come to our rehearsal area and he was in full wig, full costume. And we're like, oh, this is cool. And he looked the part. We were like, oh, it's pretty cool. So do this. Let's go through this. And then the next minute... Someone goes, oh, Adam's on his way around. He wants to do some training. And we're like, no, you got to get out of there. Hey, you go. <laughs> and he's like, what, what? And we're like, you got to go, mate. Come on, just let go. Literally, Adam was walking in one door while we were pushing this from the other out. The other door, he would have gone mental. But just, it was, it was nerve-wracking. Honestly, that's how, that's how it was. Because I, for one, Adam would have been freaked out. Why is he in costume? What are you doing behind me back or something like that? And for two, it was like, he, he, it was just an impromptu. We were like, yeah, yeah, the cloak will work good for Adam. Like, it was all for Adam's benefit. We're like, yeah, the cloak will work good. It doesn't get in the way of, try it with the long saber, try it with the short saber. It was one of them, yeah, but anyway. Yeah, we were like, you can't go, no. So that. lesson learned: um, if you can avoid it, don't be Adam Driver's stunt double. Uh, no, it, he doesn't yeah. need it. Yeah, it's funny. Wow, um, Lacey James, do you guys have any anything else? I mean, I could go on for twelve hours, but I know it's late over yeah. here for Eunice right now. I have one more actually. So you had mentioned that Palpatine was thirteen as his code name. What were the other yeah. code names? And how is that like? Just like keeping track of all these weird names and. Secrecy, I think like that. It, it was really hard. Like the uh, the transporter, when Chewie got taken off in the transporter uh, by uh, the Knights of Ren, um, it was called the White Van. And someone went, you, know, you need to go to the, the back lot because the White Van's there. And I was like, why do I want to go to see the, the White Van in the back lot? <laughs> and I would be going over there looking for this White Van. And there was this just this like, stupid piece of set there that I didn't even know what it was for. And I was like, oh, God. Yeah, the, the code names are ridiculous. Um, uh, Han Solo was the pilot. Mm -hmm. Oh, Harrison Ford? Yeah. He was the pilot, which is cool. Uh, Daisy's code name, Ray's code name was Jazz. I don't know why that was. I think it was because she used to be a dancer, I think. Her middle name is Jazz. Yeah, it's her middle name. Oh, I think, who's middle name? Daisy's? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, so that's why she was called yeah. Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> you had this deep explanation of this is... Yeah, I was like, oh, it was because she used to dance. Or <laughs> no, I believe her name is Daisy Isabel Jazz. Jazz Isabel Ridley. She has like yeah, seven like middle names. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. did not know that. Uh, what else can I remember? It's hard to remember it all. Um, the hotel room was Kylo Ren's, Kylo Ren's apartment was the hotel room. I remember that. <laughs> uh, it was crazy. Like the, the, the code names was ridiculous. I've, I've got to say it was insane. Uh -huh. uh, some of them are quite funny, but I can't, I, 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 actually I should try and dig them all out to show you because they're quite interesting. Some of them, but I can't remember. I couldn't remember them then. Did you ever get in trouble for secrecy or accidentally? All the time. <laughs> Literally all the time. Honestly, <laughs> all the time. I would just, I'd be on set and I'd just be standing there and I'd go, <clears throat> oh, hey, and I'd go, hey, JJ, you know when Palpatine comes in and he does that and then the whole set would go quiet and everyone would look at me and I'd be like, oh, what have I said? <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like that all the time, all the time. I was always getting told off, constantly getting told off for it all. Uh, <clears throat> did you ever um 
Did you ever think you could lose your job because you sent something or did something that caused a problem? Yeah, yeah. I got told off that many times. I thought they're going to say to me soon, all right, Eunice, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> your mouth is too big. You got to go. Uh, because I did. I, 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 I probably got told, well, I say that probably other people did, but I felt like I got told off the most. I felt like I was always in the ad teacher's <laughs> office all the time. I felt like I was always in the ad teacher's office. But it sounded like JJ yeah. loved you, so that's the that was the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, that was a bonus. That's probably what stopped me getting the sack all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy's like, get her out of here, and he's like, no, no, no. I love her. No. <laughs> um, okay, I have one last question. It's the hardest question of the night. Okay. Will you cheers me a bevy? Cheers. I'll cheers. <laughs> How do we do? Where's my camera? Oh, there, yeah. Cheers. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming on. We'll have to, honestly, if you're ever interested, we'd love to have you back sometime down the road uh, to talk a bit more. Um, But is there anything you would want to, um, like, plug or promote? Anything you're going to be working on that you want people to check out or things in the past you want them to check out? No, I'm not really a... No. <laughs> right on. All right. Just Liverpool. Like a- anybody, just come and and uh, se- send all best wishes to Liverpool Football Club that we resume the season and we win the title finally. There you go. Yeah. Right That's on. what I would want. <laughs> well, Eunice, thank you so much for coming on. You've been such an awesome guest. I don't remember laughing this hard um, ever doing this. So uh, we really appreciate it. And. I, I just want to recommend something to you. Go check out the Skywalker Legacy documentary on the bonus features of The Rise of Skywalker. I think you might like it. So. I still won't. <laughs> well, thank you for no, coming No, but on. thank you. It's been a pleasure at any time, guys. It's really been a pleasure, honestly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So what do you think about that, huh? I told you. <laughs> told you. Amazing, right? You probably wanted it to keep going. We did too, but... Yeah, Eunice is so nice. She probably would have stayed on for another hour, but it was like twelve thirty her time. She's in Liverpool, mm-hmm. uh, so it was late for her. But um, we were honored to have a few bevies with her. And yeah, talk. cheers to her. Bevies yeah, to cheers to you, Eunice. Thank you again so much. Um, we got a t-shirt coming your way, as you know. Uh, that was part of the deal. But honestly, there's nothing else I could say. You just saw it and heard it. And one of my, I think, favorite interviews and uh, guest spots we've ever had. Um, guys, anything you want to say before we move on? She's just um, the best. <laughs> I yeah, keep saying actually, that, but we, it's so true. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we did we did kind of a reaction to this uh, for resistance officers. I know this is our normal show, but if you do have um, Patreon access or you want to become a patron or whatever, we kind of have this video where we, you know, after we interviewed her, we just kind of talked about the experience of kind of what it is right now, but we went into a lot more detail. So um, yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, we also did that for our resistance officers. And I know that out we would love to have her back on because like I said, we did about an hour and she even said that hour cruised and an hour 20. Yeah. Well, cause 20 yeah. minutes yeah. before air, uh, we had with her. Yeah. Um, we were chatting with her. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I would love to have her back on. I know there's other details about that movie and her work on that and other work she's done that we can get into. So I hope, uh, we stay in touch. We could have her back on. Cause again, one of the best, and I hope you out there listening and watching thought the same as we did. Uh, cause we absolutely loved it. And, if you're going to share one of our videos, one of our interviews, one of our guest spots with someone, please share this with your friends who like Star Wars, especially people who like The Rise of Skywalker and that documentary. Because if you liked the minutes that she was in that, there's an hour with her talking about it uh, more in depth there. So uh, we She's appreciate you um, tuning in. Because I couldn't do it on the show, I can show <laughs> now what the shirt was. <laughs> there it is. Nice. Yeah. What does it say? So this James? it's on a black shirt. It says, "I wasn't gonna have a bevy." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's always tweeting that. And, uh, we're glad that she did have a bevy with us. But yes. now it is time to have a bevy with you out there, uh, and we're gonna send it to Lacey. <laughs> I am. I'm excited about this. This is a good episode. Man, did we crush it today? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> we are so awesome. These, well, they, good question, guys. There, yeah. <laughs> They're awesome because this week I'm really vibing uh, the resistance transmissions. So, Lacey, I know you haven't seen them, but let's I fire haven't. up. 
resistance transmissions. All right, guys, it's time for resistance transmissions. So the way that this works is every week, John puts up a crazy, wacky situation, and you guys give your answers. And I've never seen the question. I don't know what the scenario is, to the point that the other day I was on Twitter, and uh, my husband was like, oh, what does that say? And I was like, I don't know. I can't look at it. Oh. <laughs> I, I Do you know that I also, too, don't know these? Oh, that's is, so is fun, that James. Yeah, I don't read them. Oh, good for you, James. That, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. All right. So the scenario is Darth Vader is about to leave his meditation chamber when he realizes his helmet is missing. He decides to hit the web to kill time. What does Vader Google while he waits for a new helmet? (laughs) All right. First up, John has a smirk on his face right now. Uh, First up is Mark Newbold at prefect underscore timing. And he said... He Googles, did self-help guru Tony Robbins really release a book called Unlimited Power? And if so, does that make him my new boss? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Next up is Bethany (laughs) Peterson at beer underscore underscore fet. And she said, easy, simple, yet chic, dining room setups to impress smugglers and princesses on a date in Cloud City. <laughs> Got to prepare. Um, that was a good setup, too. That you was. know, yeah. he laid it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The next is the phony king of England at Mike and the Mouse. And he said, reaction videos of YouTube to Revenge of the Sith. Specifically, the last 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Skip ahead, skip ahead. Yeah. yeah. Next is Alex Brandt at Alex M. Brandt. Oof. And was that because he didn't get his handle? No. Was that that oof? Yeah. Uh, and his is 25 things you didn't know about midichlorians. Number eight <laughs> will shock you. Click. <laughs> 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 absolutely those things always get me man yeah. they would I'm always like <laughs> I not so much like celebrity news or gossip right. or thing but there's always things that are like eight iOS tips you didn't know and I'm like I bet I know all of them and but I'm like but I might not know one that's why I'm saying you click on it for the most part because you usually know you just it. test yeah. yourself that's gonna be the title yeah. of this coming Monday's episode <laughs> 25 things you didn't know about midichlorians yeah (laughs) next up is agent 37 at underscore agent 37 and he said witty things to say while force choking people (laughs) (laughs) that's good next is alex zukas at zubaka who said clicks on uh quotes 10 jedi who mysteriously disappeared where are they now? <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. Next is Chris Chapel at C Monkey Business. And Chris said, Ahsoka Tano Facebook. <laughs> oh, <laughs> creeping. Uh, next is John Reese at John S. Reese. And John said, How to parent siblings who kiss each other? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh. That's a tough thing to do, I guess, huh? (laughs) Gross. Uh, Next is Sleeping Moose at Sleeping Moose. And Sleeping Moose said, opens Google Maps, searches pathway to abilities some consider to be unnatural. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. That that one was really clever. (laughs) That is clever. Next is Dan at X-Wing underscore Dan. And he said, how to tell if my boss is trying to replace me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's like is your business spying on yeah. you kind of stuff yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ne- and last but not least is the potato king your honor your majesty <laughs> Tro- at trogdor <laughs> at trogdor underscore six you guys don't know what trogdor is i know trogdor trogdor yeah the burninator yeah right what yeah strong bad trogdor the burninator he's a Home star runner he's a dragon with one, one arm, one muscle like arm. A muscle arm. <laughs> yeah. From what? <laughs> it's from homestarrunner.com. Yeah. 
It's like a '90s right. thing. Oh wow! Yeah, late late '90s, maybe. Yeah. Dear yeah. Strong Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right. He said, "How to bond with son after minor mutilation." <laughs> 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 Ooh. Ooh. Guys, Gotta thank you so him. much. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> If you guys want to be on the show, make sure to follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N. John puts up some scenario every week, mm. and you guys give your answers, and then we read them on the show. We talk about your handle, make references that John doesn't get. Yeah. He's going to look up that stuff after this. You should. It's classic. Yes. John, that, uh, that hand pun that you just did, mm-hmm. solid five out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, John. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was well done, James. Your finger's really on the pulse. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening, watching, being a part of the resistance. Again, we really hope you enjoyed that interview with Eunice Huthart. Uh, it blew me away, blew my ex- expectations out of the water, and we look forward to uh, hearing your feedback on that. So make sure you leave a comment. We're going to be uh, in the comments on YouTube at 12 o'clock eastern time if you Mm -hmm. want to hang out with us in there we'll respond to anything you had to say about the episode uh any questions you had about things we asked her why we asked her we'll be there 12 o'clock so head there to youtube uh but make sure wherever you are listening or watching subscribe uh youtube soundcloud spotify apple podcast podbean wherever and if you are an apple user we would like it very much if you wanted to rate us and review us five stars only takes a few seconds we appreciate that. Um, make sure you guys are going to StarWarsNewsNet.com every day for your latest Star Wars news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Uh, like we said before, Patreon.com slash Resistance Broadcast. You know the deal by now. If you do want to support us, hop over there. If not, that's cool. But uh, tiers start at 2 bucks a month, and we appreciate all of your support. Um, we did just hit a goal where we're going to be doing a commentary for The Empire Strikes Back, audio and video. So I'm so fired up about that, and we'll probably get that to you after the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. But I do want to say a special thank you to our generals on Patreon. Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, Micah Harrison, Gary, the Tampa movie guy, Michael Gaines, Jetta Rosewater, and Val Trichkoff. Generals, thank you so much for all of your support. We honestly could not do this without you. Uh, it means a great deal. And Neil, again, great job on your pod race. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey. Just doing some dad joking. Stuff like that. And at StarWarsNewsNet.com yeah. doing some writing and editing. Um, James Bainey, how about you, buddy? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Meyer Trunks. Uh, just doing what John was saying. Nothing too crazy. Doesn't get out of hand. <laughs> oh, I hate both fa- of you. Face palm, right? <laughs> L- yeah. Lacey, how about you? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram not making hand jokes <laughs> at Lacey Gillerin. All right, guys. We will... Stop see trying you. to think of one. Just end the show because I know that's what you're doing. Just end the All show. Right. Look, we hope we hope everyone's staying safe out there. We hope you're doing well. The delay in his voice of... Well, yeah. uh, I'm trying to go for one more. I couldn't pull no, it. Uh, no, no. Yeah. Denied. Well, that'll put a nail in that coffin. Um, so we hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. There's nails on fingers. Uh, stay safe. Stay well. And we'll see you Monday morning, as always, with another episode right here on the Resistance Broadcast, where you'll find out the 25 ways about midichlorians, and number eight will blow your mind, and you'll click on it. I don't know. We'll see you around, kids. Bye. Knucklehead. Knucklehead.